But I guarantee you, if you don't go ahead and invest in the pony seat, you're going to forget that and you're going to start lashing. And the next thing you know, you're going to you're, you're look down and be like, dang it. Because when you, you, you're, you're concentrating on fans and you got so much other stuff, you got to worry about your isolation. You got to check on your client, make sure your client is OK. Your client could be someone who's moving around a lot. Your client can cause stress to you, too. Mm -hmm. OK, it's funny. That's fine. Um, your client can be someone that is, is causing a lot of drama for you, too. She could be moving around a lot. She'd be trying to get you to check her phone. I tell my clients, I don't, I don't check their phones now. That, that'll be $2. That'll be $2 for me checking your phone. I ain't got time for that. I'm here trying to lash. I got a client right after you. Thank you. So I, I pray, I really do pray that that helps. Okay. Does anybody else that's not at the office? Thank have you questions? so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. What about a back brace? Because I know some, well, I'm a, I'm an SD, but wear the, the thing around to keep their posture straight. Do you know if that actually works? It does. I wear one. I wear one. I don't have one on today. I decided not to put it on today because I was trying to be grown. Um, but um, I wear one almost every day that I lash for sure. Uh, but you got to remember, I'm also a hairstylist, so I also do hair as well. So I really wear one when I do hair because with hair, I'm standing. I'm standing. And 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 when in standing, I'm bending and humping over, bending over a client while I'm standing. That that's even worse. At least with lashing, it allows me allows you to sit. You know, with standing, you're actually humped over some someone. So, yes, wear your braces. That's not a problem. You don't want to wear it all the time every day because what happens is your back gets uh, used to it, and it actually weakens your back over time it's a it helps it helps right away but over the if you wear it every single day and you never give your, your your back a chance to to rest then you know then that's where you have an issue you have an issue with the day that you don't wear it your back is used to having it have that support and your your vertebrae it kind of wants to clap, collapse again because it's used to having that brace to keep it especially the stiffer the brace so my my suggestion would be if you have to wear a brace, don't wear one that's so stiff that we're because as we're taller when we first get up, we're taller in the middle in the beginning of the day because our vertebrae has been stretched out over the you know you ever see that that exercise that machine where you go to your chiropractor and they hang you upside down to stretch out your vertebrae, so to give you give you some back relief, that's because when we sleep it actually allows us to stretch out. That's the first why the first thing we want to do when we wake up is stretch. But as the day goes on, our vertebrae collapse and then it goes back. So if your back is used to that support, having it there, and then the day you don't wear it, oh my goodness, you're going to be in lots of pain because now your, your back is depending on it. It's like when you get a cast, you haven't really used your, you haven't really used that muscle in a while, right? So then when you start walking on your foot, then it kind of aches, not because it's not healed, but because you haven't been using, you haven't been standing on it on your own uh, recognizance you've been using something's been helping you and supporting the, your body weight now that you're putting your body weight back on it now it kind of hurts because you're, you're having to use it again so the, keep in mind that if you use it over a long period of time then that's that's that could be an issue you created another issue on the other side of it so keep that in mind maybe something temporarily maybe a couple days a week the day that you're either going to be the busiest but I wouldn't make a habit of doing it every day, which is why I didn't wear mine today because I knew I wasn't going to do any lashing today. So I gave my my back a break from having it on so that it, my body doesn't get used to it. So hopefully that helped. All right, I love the way y'all are talking to me. I love it. Okay, so um, what else? What are any more questions that we have? Okay, January, I know you had your hand raised. What What do you have going on? Talk you to answered me. me. It was about the glue on the iPad. Oh yeah, okay, I sure did. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, and are you lashing? I'm practicing now. Okay, so let me see. Let me see what how your fans are. Are we making fans? They're a hot mess. Why you said they're a hot mess? <laughs> because there's glue like 
gloves up on the iPad underneath where I okay, attached them. Okay, so let me put the put the camera down on your towel and let me see how you make your fans. And I understand, and that's why you asked the question about the glue. So I didn't expect your 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 mannequin strip to be you know perfect because obviously you've already um, you've already worked on you already you know you already knew that there was an issue. You just didn't know what. Uh, can you see my? I can. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me put my glasses. That on. helps me. But that helps me because I, I'll be able to help you. Okay, so you pull it halfway off and then you shimmy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, who is this? Oh, Michaela. Okay. So you pull it you pull it halfway off, you shimmy, then it you fan it. Okay. Then you put it in the glue. Okay. Okay, so the only correction that I have with it is that you can shimmy some more. Okay. You can shimmy and open it up more. Okay. Because they kind of look like let me see if I can stick it to her face, her iPad. Yeah, they're kind of close together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me make a suggestion. Grab your palette again. I want you to try something for me. I love your tweezers, by the way. They're cute. Thank you. Okay. So grab, reach around like you're going to pull it up, mm -hmm. but don't grab. We're doing megas now, okay? Okay. All right. So I want you to grab seven, eight, or 90 at least, at the very least, because we're going to lose some. Okay. okay. So don't pull it yet, but I want you to start shimmying it back and forth with your tweezers around it. Now hang on to it. Okay. Go back, go down to the base where it's even, but make sure that the tweezers are around it and shimmy now with it with it in the middle of the tweezers. Oh, okay. See how that flared that open? Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Now once you shimmy back and forth and the tweezers are around it, right? And you mm -hmm. like you like that it's nice and big and open. Now mm -hmm. pin slide all the way to the bottom and pinch the crap out of it. Like your like your reputation depended on and pull it off. Oh, that's so much better. Isn't it so much better? <laughs> now, look at how wide that is. That's beautiful. See, okay. everybody see that? Just by doing that, making that quick, that little tweak. This is how I help my students here because I can actually see what they're doing. And I'm able to help them. Now, dip it in your glue. Now, go ahead and go through. And you can slide it through. You still can use your ring to close it even more. Mm -hmm. But you ain't got to worry about that fan. That fan is no longer an issue because now it's wide open. Look at that mega fan you just made. That looks wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Anybody else want to show me so I can help them? There's five different methods. They're all different. You can and, and you can use it. If you can make a, a mega fan, it's harder to make. If you can make a mega fan, a, a volume is a piece of cake. You, right. So now, January, you'll be able to go back and you'll be like, oh, that 3D fan, you'll be doing it just like this. Because and you and you look and you got rid of two steps. So now it's like boop, 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 done. Boop, 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 done. And now you go, I want you to make your pro made fans. Start making your pro maids. I have the cases here, so I don't know. I don't know. I got all these cases. <laughs> you need one. Let me let me teleport one to you. So you can start making your promes, but you can get um you can get you know your little Monday Tuesday when your little pill boxes, use Monday for your nine millimeters, Tuesday for your ten, so on and so forth, and you can start making them like that. Let them dry, just leave them out until you until they're dry. Once you make your whole strip of nines, they'll dry enough to then put them all in one thing. You don't have to put them lay them out and put them on a nice strip. They can they can be in just a little cylinder into a little container, or you know those little um. Those little safety pin containers with the little screw top on it, just always make sure it has a top or lid to it. They're a little bit bigger and they're and then and they're round and they have a little bit more of a cylinder that you can kind of screw them together. Have you seen them? Okay, so you know, just just look for stuff like that. Like go into the school supply section in the in Walmart or go oh, go to Hobby Lobby or MJ I'll Design. Yeah, okay. Hobby Lobby. Or MJ Design, and go over, and they have a lot of. Uh, I don't know where you are, but you can get little stuff like that. It don't have to be anything that you spend. I spent like, ooh, I spent like sixteen dollars a piece 
for these cases. So that's that's a little, that's you know that can be expensive. Well, I bought twenty of them, so you know do the math. But you only need one or two. I would do one for my megas, and then I would do another one just for my three D. I would do a whole set of three D in all the sizes because you're gonna do a you can do a three D set for volume, but you can also you need a three D to do your hybrid. So that way you ain't got to make a whole bunch of new promades. So I would make one set for Mega and I would make one set for your hybrid and your volume. Okay. I hope that helped. All right. Anybody else need help? Anybody? Everybody's working. They're doing their thing. Okay, let me uh, see if I can find some more videos. It's only 2.30. See if I can keep y'all busy. Can I show you my fans? You can tell oh, me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's that quote? Oh, I'm sorry, I went. Chastity. Okay, let's see. I didn't do it on them. Um, I just did it on the sponge. No, that's fine. I suppose I'll be able to see better. Oh, hold on. Okay, let me get a rubber sponge. I'm going to take your head and hold it so I can see it. Oh, oh sh. Hang on, I threw, I threw everything across the room. Okay, hold on. I'll hold it like this. Wait. Oh, I think it's clear. Hold it like this, flat. Flat. Yeah, 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 like that. Okay, turn it to the side. Yeah, that's good. Spin it around. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I need to see one of them by itself without it being in a row. So I can make sure that you're opening it up as not so tell me talk to me through your technique. Which which one are you using? The glue, you ring. the glue ring. No, no, no. What how do you pull it off the strip? Start from the strip. Like what tweezers do you let me see your tweezers? Okay, let me can I turn mine. Okay. Because I want to start, I want to see what you use from beginning to end. Okay, you that's the tweezer I use. That's a 90 degree angle tweezer. You guys, that one did not come in your kit. If you have it, go get it. It is amazing. It's everything. It's better than the boot because you can see what's going on with your fan. Okay, so your tweezers, right? Yeah. Um, you have something on a tile where well, you can hold your tile up and show me. I can place my phone down. Okay, cool. Okay. I need your. I need it. Um, it's blurry. It's it's blurry. Mm-hmm. Let me pull it up some. Is that better? Mm, that's actually worse. Go back closer. Hold on. Let me wipe my phone off. Yeah, I can see better. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Winner, winner. Okay. That works. I just want to see your technique so I can see how I can add to it or if it's or if you already nailed it. Okay, so you shimmy with it uh, in the tweezer? Um, I really don't. I really didn't shimmy it. I just grabbed some. Okay, go ahead. You pull it off, okay. And you put in the glue, and then you, then you. So you use the 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 ring to flare it out. Yes. Okay. So it that that's a great method. Now let me give you a, something else to try, and then okay. if you don't, and then if you don't like it, then you go back. Okay. Okay. So all I can see is you. We lost connection. Oh, hold on. I only see your picture. I don't see you anymore. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Now. 
grab okay so we're doing mega volumes your your what you're doing is not mega all these around here are mega okay we're trying, we're trying to do megas now right yeah okay so cool. yours were all the way around your your sponge they don't they're not megas these aren't mega no it's omega 70 to 25d this one has these have more than seven does it okay so you're doing good then i i can it's hard for me to see that okay so you're blurry again your your um your palette is blurry your a uh, sponge is not blurry just the just, oh, just the, the palette just the palette okay, okay good. yeah 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 that's good okay okay so reach around uh uh why like you're pulling them off okay around like so open in other words the the lashes are going to be in between your tweezers but grab them at the don't pull it off just squeeze just touch it just press it at the base of it so your tweezers should be along the base of it but the lashes should be in between okay okay so pinch it and then shimmy from there don't take it off shimmy right there before you take it off i'm trying to take a step out of your your so you won't need your ring anymore okay shimmy there and use the base of it while the tweezers are around it i can't get it you got to really close close okay. the tweezer really tight so do me a favor pretend like you're going to grab it and pull it off hold it just like you would if you were going to grab it to pull it off you know that you got to apply a certain amount of pressure to pull it off right right okay so once you do that make sure that when you do pinch it together and you grab it it's at the base so that you can shimmy if you grab it and pull and pinch it in the middle then what's going to end up happening is it's, it's going to um and you're shimmying too hard it should be little bitty little bitty micro strokes yeah like that just inch, inching back and forth you're going back and forth too far you i mean your your movement should be really short like look at me for a second it should be so short it should be short it should be you know i can't see myself like itty bitty you're going mm -hmm. you're doing this yeah just like a little just ba just barely barely moving your whole hand should just be going back and forth okay okay i grabbed some but like they're not the open the, mm -hmm. yeah no i need you to shimmy more i'm trying to get you to get rid of that ring so you ain't got to depend on it because then you can just put the round ring on your tile then you can just dip it in there and then you have not have so many steps right but for some people it just don't work if it, if that's not your method then that's not your method and you may you may i mean i i hate to correct a method that obviously works for you but in the scheme of things that extra second that you're using you could get your time down mm -hmm. because they'll be like you want to go you want to go to you want to um they'll want what's the name of your business mine yeah spoil girl collection okay you want to go to spoil girl because not only does she make killer fans but she's fast i'm trying to take a second out of every last that you make if i can take a second out of that and make you faster because my clients come to me for two reasons number one i use high-end uh product number two i'm fast time is money right right okay and then number three i do i do good work i got great retention and i have a great retention because of the glue the glue uh, technique i'm taught i'm teaching y'all so i have a triple threat now what i don't have is price I, i'm not budging on my prices and i can't budge on my prices because i'm using high-end uh, right. product now if i was using you know the average product then i probably could be more flexible on my pricing but i can't because i'm i'm, I'm spending top dollar on my stuff and I need to make sure that I'm getting compensated for the for the choice. I'm making a choice to do that. I don't have to, you know. So I'm not the cheapest around, but I got the other three going for me. Right. You you have um, price going for you, and then you.
have quality going for you and now you need time to work for you so all i'm trying to do is make your time shorter so i'm trying to make that shimmy and happen on the board so you don't have to move it over because you're using what well, you're using two seconds to get it off the board you're using one second to dip it in the glue and using another two seconds to shimmy it in, on your ring right that's too many you're wasting too many seconds i'm trying to make the two seconds that you're on your your tile i'm trying to make that two seconds count so it cuts down on your time then all you gotta do is dip it in your glue and then go okay i'll work on does shimmy. that make sense yeah it does so you're already great you're already good i'm trying to make you great thank you time is what money money that part okay so keep working on it and then i'll touch base with you um i'm gonna put my my email address in the chat and um if you want to reach out to me you can i do again i said earlier ladies i have a group me so if you want to get on my group me you can it goes directly to my phone um but otherwise if you're not comfortable with that that's fine um then you can um you can just email me I'm doing it right now because I'm old girl. I'll be forgetting. Thank you. Thank you for letting me help you. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. If you if you get it before we get off here at five, then holler at me. Say, Miss Cynthia, I got it. <laughs> holler at me, okay? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Because any, any, all, because that's why I'm doing it. Because I got cause on here. I got Manny Petty in here. I got all of them online. So. Yeah. That's right. Okay, cool. You're welcome. All right. Good job. All right. Anybody else want to show me? Got a question? Anything like that? Anything, anything? Okay, let me uh, see if I can find a video, some videos then. I actually do have a question while you're doing that. Yeah, sure, go ahead, shoot. Who's, who's, who's talking? Jasmine. Yes, ma'am. So it's not really about lashing, it's just in general, how do we know to go about pricing? And I feel like that's something that um, just like okay. when I finish with the program, how do I yeah. know to go about my price? Yeah, um, I'm gonna go over that in marketing, but I'm not gonna, I hate when people do that. If I ask you a question now, it's because it's important now. So I'm not gonna be like, tune back in tomorrow and let me, mwah, bye love. Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, I got a Christmas gift for you. Merry Christmas. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll see black people. <laughs> You don't give me a gift because I give you a gift. You give me a gift because you want to give me a gift. <laughs> oh, now you feel bad. Don't feel bad. That comes from my heart. You you don't have to. <laughs> Your thank you every day it helps me. It's a blessing. Um. Okay, I'm sorry. Whoever asked the question, go ahead and ask again. I'm sorry. Jasmine. Oh, yes. Yeah. So how do we go about pricing? Like when we're finished, how do we figure out the good price? Like a Right, right. For exactly. That's a great question. Um, like I said, I'm not going to blow you off and tell you uh, tune back into my marketing class tomorrow because that's what we're going to go over in marketing tomorrow. I'm going to answer your question because it's what is important to you in this moment and you want to know in this moment. I used to hate that when I was in high school. They would say, uh, we're going over that tomorrow or we went over that yesterday. I'm like, I, I want to know now because I'm asking now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, OK, so for a classic. OK, so first of all, Pricing depends on three things, the quality of your product, the quality of your work, and your speed. So if the quality of your product is, is on average with everyone else's, meaning I need you to call around and find out what the prices are in your local area, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanted to sit early to live in Livingston because I was going there for that Frito pie because I thought that chili was homemade, wherever that was. Okay, so I don't know what the prices are in Livingston. I only know what the prices are in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? So that that individual, if she's going to do lashes, 
I'm sorry, I don't remember who you were. Um, she needs to call around in Livingston and see what the local lash people are are price. You know what I mean? Are are charging? Uh -huh. So that's the first thing. In your immediate area, if you live in Desoto in Dallas, you need to call everywhere in Desoto. If you live in Prosper in Dallas, you need to call around all the local places in Prosper. Because what you want to do is you want to be the cheapest place in the game. Because if someone is online and they don't know anyone to look at, and they're saying find a lash stylist near, and they're gonna put their zip code in. They're gonna say find lash artist near. Boom. I live in seven five two one nine. That's where my shop is. So it's seven five two one nine. They're gonna say fine in seven five two one nine, and then I'm gonna pop up. Now I'm not gonna be the cheapest one in the game, but I'm gonna be on it. You know what I'm saying? But they know that, so maybe somebody somebody else will choose to go to them because they're cheaper. You know, but okay. I, but I advertise my products in the products that I use, and anyone who's been lashing for a long period of time knows those high end products. They're like, an, oh, you know what? She's cheaper, but I know what I know the quality of Nova Lash. Uh -huh. I know the quality of extreme and those are the two glues that I use. So they're going, they're going to want to Nova lash also has me on their website as a rep. Uh -huh. so if you go to, if you saying I got to have this glue because I'm allergic to da, 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 and I got to have this glue and I only want someone that's using this particular glue. See my glue even you sends me customers. I'm not taking okay. any new customers anymore, but but you know what I'm saying. When I was, that's what that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. I was getting clients from Nova Lash because they knew I used the glue. Mm -hmm. okay. So do the do the lash stylist near whatever your zip code is, and then you call around and find out and pretend to be a client. Uh, I want to know. I'm think I, I'm new to lashes. Just it's like you're green because they won't. If you if if they, they they know that you've not had lashes before, they'll spend a little bit of time with you on the phone because they feel like they got to convince you to get the lashes, uh -huh. and they'll tell you some more information so they'll answer your questions. Okay, okay so you'll you'll let them know say okay, so how much like what's the different types of lashes? Ask. Don't be like I need a hybrid because they know you don't been calling somebody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just just say what types of lashes do you have? Like this, I've never had lashes before. I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but can you help me? I don't know. So then they'll tell you what kind of sets they have. And then you ask them, is that all of my lashes or a little bit of my lashes? And then let them know I have a lot. Just say, just, just lie. Say I have a lot of lashes. Cause some of people they'll have these really good deals, but they'll only be 90 lashes or 100 lashes, or they'll count the lashes. It'll be great deals, and you'll be like, oh my god, I can't pass that up. But then you find out that they're counting lashes. So that means mm -hmm. once they get that number of lashes, no matter how many lashes you got, they're stopping. Is it? Oh. So make sure okay. you ask. Um, but a classic should be anywhere from $150 to $200. Um, a hybrid should be $200 to $250. And a volume should be $250 to $300 on average. Okay. Okay. So Thank you may. Now, starting out, you may want to do a classic for $75. You may want to do a hybrid for $100. And you may want to do a volume for $150 just to start to get experience. And I know that's low, but you got to start somewhere. That's going to give you the experience. That's going to give you the volume. Mm -hmm. You know, right and now then, it's about volume. So, so that'll then give when you would you start to increase those fees? Like when I feel like As you I'm get getting your time better. Down, as you get your time now, because if you are here and you're one of my students here at school, you know that I won't sign off anything unless it's got a time on it, because mm -hmm. I want to know that you're getting faster and faster and faster and faster. Once you get my technique down, once you got the technique and you got it nailed, then I'm sending you to the floor because now I know you got the technique down. Now I need and now I need you to just get the speed. OK, and then that's why I was helping um, uh, Chastity and I was helping her because I wanted her to, I wanted to help her. She's got the fanning down. She's got, she's got a technique that already works for her, but she's got too many steps in her technique. So I wanted her speed to pick up. So now mm -hmm. that I know she's got a technique that works for her, I wanted to help her with the speed mm -hmm. because time is money. So the more, and, and you're thinking, oh, it's just a second. It's just an extra second or two, but an extra mm -hmm. second or two times a hundred lashes per eye, you do the math. That mm -hmm. time, and then you got two eyes, remember? So you mm -hmm. don't wait an extra two seconds on each lash, and you still got a whole nother eye to do. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. She could knock her time down by 45 minutes by taking out that extra step. 
Gotcha. Okay. So um, I would, as soon as you, every time you do a set of lashes, not the cleanup, not the taping, but the, how long it actually takes you to lash. Because what I do is I do my consultation, I do my lash bath, and then after I do my lash bath, then um, I do my, and then you do your mapping. You do your taping down and you do your mapping, right? And then you get ready to, you sanitize your hands again after that. And then you get ready to lash. I verbally say to my client, all right, we're getting ready to get started. I'm letting her know, I'm, I'm now I'm timing you from, I'm clocking you from that point. Mm -hmm. Because I charge by, um, by time. I don't okay. charge by, I get, because they know they're getting a lot of lashes in that time. I got a 30 minute feel. I got an hour, a 60 minute feel. I got a 90 minute feel. I got three different fields based on time, but I'm lash really quick. You can't do time, a time to lash if a time feel if you're slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they're not gonna, they don't care that it's only a 30 minute lash. They only got 10, they only got 10 lashes in 10, in 30 minutes. You uh -huh. gotta be fast. So if yeah. I can get you fast and then you're just doing it just like that, then I'm like, okay, now you're ready to, for that timing. Because because mm -hmm. your timing will get them full in that time. And then you can have you can have four hours worth of 30 minute lashes and look how much money that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes did a 30, right. And you only did a 30 minute lash each, but that 30 minute lash is like someone else's one at one hour feel. Mm -hmm. Super fast. Mm -hmm. So okay. until you get your speed, sell it by what the set is. Your classic mm -hmm. lash set and then give it a price, $75 for your classic lash set. As a, as a brand new person, $75, but let them know it's going to be two and a half hours. That's why you're getting okay. it for 75 Five dollars. You just let them know in the in the fine print. Like tomorrow, when I go over the marketing and I show you how to do, put it put it on your advertise it on your social media. I'm gonna also show you how to put it on the different um, gloss genius and um, style seed. I got a list of them that I'm gonna go over. When you get ready to put it on there and you put the pricing, be like special seventy five dollar classic set, um, and then put full. You know, but uh -huh. in small print, put two point five hours. So they know okay. you're getting yeah. it for $75. But the reason why you're giving it set for $75 because it's going to take me two and a half hours to do it. Some people mm -hmm. got time, no money. Some people got money, no time. Yeah. Your client will come to you for time, no money. My client will come to me for money, no time. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Anybody else have a question about pricing, mark, you know, whatever? All right. Are we good on insurance? Everyone's got their professional um, insurance. You got to have that. It's about, it ranges anywhere from $120 to $150 annually. You must have that. Whether you work in a salon or in your own suite, you must have that insurance. You must. It'll even pay for your building being if your building if you, if your salon blow burns up and burns up all your equipment, it'll even pay for that. So keep that in mind. That's important. All right. Let me see what else I can find. questions.
Hi everyone, I am back. Welcome to Lash Therapy on YouTube. My name is Maria. If you are new here, please don't forget to hit that bell notification to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss out on any new videos. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating for you guys how you can create volume and mega volume wispy fans using the Russian volume technique and using the pinch method to be more specific. A lot of girls were having problems with picking up the lash extensions and then them falling apart. And that's because of your tweezer. What I did was I ended up hand testing a whole bunch of different tweezers. It literally took me three years for me to specifically design a tweezer with no sweet spot. Yes, no sweet spot. This way it's gonna make it a lot easier for beginning lash technicians and it's gonna make it way easier for advanced technicians. Can't wait for you guys to see what's next. Okay, so very quickly, I just want to show you how I set up my tile before we create our wispy volume or mega volume fan. I have a sticker in the corner and I use a piece of next care tape on top just so it is a barrier when I do apply my little glue dot. It does not expand or lay flat and that is something you want to prevent when you make your glue bubble is for it not to lay flat or expand. The glue that I'm going to be using in this video is called Girl Next Door from Sinful Lashes. This is my secret weapon, you guys. I love this glue. I don't have any bad retention when I use this. I've actually used this in California and Florida, and I don't have any problems. So just to show you what that glue bubble looks like, it doesn't expand or lay flat. That's just kind of what you want it to look like. Next, I'm going to brush my lashes really quick. And then next, I'm going to show you how the tweezer has no sweet spot. As you can see, when you pull the extensions off, they do not fall apart. And they will not fall apart when you go in and grab your extensions. That is the most frustrating thing to experience. And you will never have to worry about that with this tweezer, which is the best part. So I'm going to show you again really quickly how I just dipped it in a little bit. And then it formed that beautiful fan with that snatched base. That's how you want that base to look. You want it to be super thin, super narrow, so it's parallel to that natural lash. Within this video, I'm going to be showing you just different fans um, and also just the different angles. So as you can see, I'm having my thumb and my finger pointing towards me as well, the extension. And I just form that fan by pinching it. And this is probably going to take you a couple of tries. So if you need to rewind this video and just do it with me, that is completely fine. So as you can see that base is not even formally, you know, together. That glue is going to do half its job and that's just kind of what that looks like. I dip the lash once to form the fan and then I dip it again before I place the extension onto the natural lash. So in case if you're wondering if I double dip, that's just how I do it. It helps me perform the technique and also make sure that my fan is good to go. Next, when you see a fan that has like those stragglers, don't worry about it, just take them apart. And I'm going to dip that in there again. And you see how that base is completely snatched? Yes, that's how it should look. Okay, so I'm going to keep, you know, performing this technique. And I'm going to show you, you know, the performance on this tweezer. And, you know, sometimes I just pump my tweezer a little bit too as well. So I can form such a fluffy and wide wispy fan. And that's how all your fans should look. Now, if you feel like that you've done it a couple times and you are unsure about that fan, I'm a perfectionist. So what I usually mm -hmm. teach my girls when they're in training is if you're not confident with that fan, then just throw it out. Don't worry about it. Take that extra step. Take that extra two seconds or two minutes, whatever it is. As long as your set is clean, your lashes are clean, you're going to see a tremendous difference and your clients is going to notice that your work is improving. Yes. Okay. 
So at any point in this base, these lashes has not fought apart. And you see the little straggler? Do not worry about it. Take it apart. And then dip it in the glue just a little bit so that that fan can form and it can stay put. And that snatched base, though, it is so satisfying to see that. And eventually you're going to see that within your work as well. And remember, the lashes that I'm using is 0.03. So I'm just going to show you just the fans that I've already made within this video. I'm going to place them right here in the kind of what I usually teach my girls when they're in training is if you're not confident with that fan, then just throw it out. Don't worry about it. Take that extra step. Take that extra two seconds or two minutes, whatever it is. As long as your set is clean, your lashes mm -hmm. are clean, you're going to see a tremendous difference and your clients is going to notice that your work is improving. Yes. Okay, so at any point in this base, these lashes has not fought apart. And you see the little straggler? Do not worry about it. Take it apart. And then dip it in the glue just a little bit so that that fan can form and it can stay put. In that snatched base, though, it is so satisfying to see that. And eventually you're going to see that within your work as well. And remember, the lashes that I'm using is 0.03. So I'm just going to show you just the fans that I've already made within this video. I'm going to place them right here and to kind of just show you when they're in training is if you're not confident with that fan, then just throw it out. Don't worry about it. Take that extra step. Take that extra two seconds or two minutes, whatever it is. As long as your set is clean, your lashes are clean, you're going to see a tremendous difference and your clients is going to notice that your work is improving. Yes. Okay, so at you. any point in this space, <laughs> these lashes has not fought apart. So and you see the little straggler? Merry Christmas. Do not worry <laughs> about it. Take it apart. And then dip it in the glue just a little bit so that that yeah. fan can oh. form and it can stay <laughs> put. In that snatched base, though, huh? it is so really? satisfying to see that. And eventually you're going to see that within your work as well. And remember, the lashes that I'm using is 0.03. So I'm just going to show you just the fans that I've already made within this video. I'm going to place them right here and to kind of just show mm -hmm. you aesthetically how they look. Some girls like to save these fans, which is fine. Um, I personally just make them and then place them immediately after. And when you get to that point when your speed is really good, then that's kind of like when you will tell that you can do the same thing. So I'm just going to show you how wispy this fan is. And the more wispier your lashes are, the more wispier that set is going to form. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to actually start creating my mega volume lash extensions. They're going to be a lot more wispier, a lot more fuller of an extension. And while you're watching this video, if you want to have your tile and your lash extension set up and lash with me, that would be great. Even if I'm not there in person, I am going to be here in your progression. And if you ever felt like giving up, please don't, because I felt like that so many times. And I really wouldn't be where I'm at in my skill level or even in my career if I did that. You know, just keep pushing through. There are things out there that will help you and will make it easier for you, I promise. So the rest of the video, I am going to be showing you mega volume, wispy fans. And if, like I said, you want to follow along with me, please do so. And if you do decide to purchase these tweezers, this will be 100% your money back guaranteed. So you literally get to practice them for free. And if they do not work for you, just give me a message and we will give you a refund. Okay, you guys, I hope that you enjoy the rest of this video on me performing the pinch method using 0.03 D-curl 16 millimeter lash extensions. Please don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss out on any new videos. And also, don't forget to add yourself to the Facebook support group, Lash Therapy. I will see you guys all next time. Would you stay to the moonlight? Or would you follow me? Or would you let it be? If I leave tonight, we could do this right. We'll find the remedy. Or would you stay with me now? Till the morning light Before you turn away I just want you to know That I didn't throw your stuff away Before you make
Make up your mind that I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober Just listen, I miss you And I know that I said all these things But now when you're with her I can see that Shop Toys R Us now at all Macy's stores. Find the season's hottest toys and everything on their wish list. Toys R Us, now playing at Macy's. Today we're going to learn about a really cool and useful little volume technique that is not commonly seen in the industry. So if you know of this technique, that's awesome. If not, it's very interesting and maybe you can use it in your practice as well. For today's practice, I have some staples. So you're just gonna wanna crack off an actual little chunk of your staples. And then I've taped my staples to my palette with just some, some tape. You can use your lash tape or any kind of tape will work. Just stick that guy somewhere that's not within your area that you're grabbing and dipping the lashes so it doesn't get in the way. So I just lay it off to the side, to the left hand side because I'm right handed. But you're also gonna need your lashes. So this will work for any type of volume technique, whether you're doing Russian volume or mega volume, you're working with 0 0.07, 0 0.05s or 0 0.03s. But for today's example, I'm working with 0 0.07 lashes and 0 0.03 lashes. So we're gonna be working with our volume and our mega volume. And when I do little tutorials like this or when I'm just hanging out at home and I'm feeling like making some fans or practicing a new technique or whatever, I always have our empty pro fan trays on handy. What these are, they, they're literally exactly like they sound. They're empty, extra large volume trays. And you can use these to put your practice bands on so that you don't have to lose them. You can go back and use them for a set anytime. And by closing it up, you know that your fans are gonna stay sanitary and ready for use. And then I'm also working with our G8 stone, which keeps my glue better for longer. And a little piece of micro pore tape, reason being is because I love that the micro pore tape keeps my glue in a dome shape. So I can dip vertically right in the middle of that dome shape, which is super helpful and my glue will last longer because when it's all kind of spread out all over the place, then it actually just cures much faster so you won't get as long out of your glue. Dome shape is definitely better. And then I'm working with my Quickie glue. I love Quickie, reason being it has a one second cure time. It is great, it's non-wicking, and that's extra important when you're working with handmade volume. You don't want a wicking glue because what a wicking glue is, it will actually make your glue ride up your volume fan. And with non-wicking, it just stays put wherever you put it, it's not gonna ride up and close up your fan. Welcome back for another video. Uh, before I do get started, I want to go ahead and thank all my new subscribers and welcome. So, I know I have been a little MIA these past couple of um, weeks or months. Okay. Uh, just we just put it back, back a little up bit there. And took a little break from oh, recording. she didn't know. She did. I am, <laughs> I'll tell her. I almost threw it away. Oh. Like, oops. Yeah, that way she suggestions you. That you guys thank you. Want, um, any videos that you guys would like me to put out there because since now we have all the time in the world. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and get into this video. So if you guys are having trouble with the pinching method, I'm guaranteed 120% after this video, you guys will be pro fans. So these I purchased off of Amazon. I will go ahead and link the description, link the item in the description below. That way you guys can go ahead and purchase these. So I do recommend you guys purchase these first and then come back and watch this video to go ahead and practice. So let's go ahead and get started. The lashes that I will be using today will be the Paris Lash Academy. These are going to be the C-Curl M.3 and then also the Live Bay Lash and these are going to be 0.5 and C-Mix. 
the glue that I will be using will be today will be the Live Bay Lash Glue. This is going to be the low humidity glue, which I absolutely love. It actually won't be as good as it usually is just due to the fact that it is a lot older and I haven't purchased a new one just due to the whole um, the whole situation that's going on right now. And obviously I'm not taking any clients. But let's go ahead and just jump right into this video. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just throw some glue in here. So like I said, this video today is actually for beginning lash artists. So for the ones that actually watched the last video I did on easy fanning lashes, this video is going to be basically the next step. Okay, on how to fan with non-easy fan lashes so we'll go ahead and grab the 11s okay and i'm pretty sure like 120 percent sure that after this video you guys are going to know what you guys are doing so this is for all the girls that when you're picking up the lash and the fan just messes up everywhere and you guys just don't you guys just throw the fan out and don't know how to fix it i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that using the flowering cup so basically you guys want to always go ahead and start with easy fan lashes just to go ahead and get the um i guess the method down and then slowly you want to move your way up to um non-easy fan lashes and i do recommend obviously practicing with the flowering cup that way you guys can go ahead and get the whole technique down so let's go ahead and start so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and when you're pulling the lash you want to go ahead and place the lash in the center of the tweezers and you're going to pinch as tight okay so we're going to go ahead and grab a few here we're gonna place it in the center and I'm going to squeeze as tight. You see that? Let me just fix my cup here. And then what you're gonna do, like I've said before, you're gonna place the lash onto the, the bed of your finger. You're still holding on tightly. You're gonna pinch. You're gonna slowly release the tweezers and you're gonna squeeze them back again okay and you know how usually when you release that you guys have a fan that looks all funky for example look at the end here so how we're gonna fix this you're gonna go ahead and dip and you're gonna go ahead and place it in the center you're gonna release and you're gonna drag you can ignore those little ones there but this is what it's going to look like minus those two there and remember this is a practice so you guys want to practice doing this but look at that and also the um tweezers that i'm using are going to be the p1s this is going to be from paris I actually do want to try the Live Bay Lash Tweezers, but every time I go on to get them, they're always sold out. Alright, so actually before you guys go in with the pinching method, I know I already did one. I want you guys to practice this way first. So what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and go in the center. You're going to pinch, grab. You're going to dip. And you're going to place it in the center here. You're going to release and you're going to drag. So you guys should just go ahead and practice doing those. I would say the whole strip practice doing that. Okay. Without the pinching. So let's just pretend you guys practice the whole strip after doing this so say we're gonna go ahead and grab this you're just gonna go ahead and dip you're gonna drop it in the middle 
of your lashes and you're going to drag. All of that fat pocket that was here, that huge pocket, is just gone. With air scope. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Mann and I'm the owner and founder of Lash Tribe Academy. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video today I want to show you one of my favorite beginner's techniques when it comes to volume lashing. Now first of all I want to show you what you are going to need today. You don't need everything. If you just want to practice, we just have the have it nice and high. If you find it's not, it means the lashes will always stick to a certain part. Yeah, even though you are creating a fan, for example, it will always be attached to the tape. Yeah, things like this, or like wriggling around and then picking it up, sliding it to the side, picking it up. Um, all of these techniques are on tape. As soon as you're grabbing the lashes, so whether that is you're placing it back here or you're placing it on a different tape, that is called off tape. I am showing you an off tape technique only because that makes you a little bit more well versed in creating the perfect fan before you're moving on to something fast. I always recommend you learn your proper fanning first. So pick up your lashes, place them back down. Now we're going to go in with our tweezers. We open up our tweezers, we grab the lashes, slightly push them to the side, and we're going to open up this fan. You're going to grab it right in the middle and lift upwards and towards you at the very last second. And this is our first off-tape technique. I like to call this technique the lean and pick technique. So once again, the most important parts are picking up the lashes nice and close to the base so that the base doesn't cross over, it's nice and tightly packed next to each other. Place the fan on the sticky strip. If you find it's not as sticky anymore, place it a little bit closer. Tap on it a little bit to make it stick. Lean it over. See, sometimes they even open up all by themselves. And then you kind of pick them open. Make sure that nothing crosses over. You can even grab everything to open up your beautiful little fan like this now the reason why i like to practice this technique with beginners is that you can really manipulate all the lashes the way they are you can get into them every single little lash and make sure they all open up evenly and this is the best practice because you need to know exactly what distance we need and with some of the other techniques that are a bit more advanced, we just don't have that kind of adjustment period where you just go in and play with them the way that we're playing with them now. So this is great to get to know your lashes and really kind of try and figure out what they do in what scenario. And I'm playing with them extremely now to show you what you can do, yeah? You can even manipulate them here on the tape a little bit and just see really what works for you. Make sure you practice it with just a few and also a few more so that you get more confident with different types of fans. Narrow fans like this one are also very important to know how to do. But then also wider fans like this one. really play with those lashes until you kind of get the hang of them this is a very beginner's technique that will allow you to really get to know how far you can push with your lashes and when they will fall off come off the tape how far you can push them over how much you can drag them across to open up and at what stage they might come off the tape just like this i really hope you enjoyed this video make sure you share it with your little lash friends um, and you get to practice a lot to get a little bit better with this every single time you practice just make sure you have good lashes again all of the products are listed 
down below in a link and everything is available on lashtribe.com.au and of course like always if you are really keen to become a lash artist yourself if you're not quite sure where to start with whether... if you shop on amazon you should use this tool it's a browser extension that automatically so a really, really common complaint is that people struggle so much with creating fans. It is so difficult until you get the hang of it properly. It's so difficult. So don't be disheartened that it doesn't come naturally or if it doesn't come quickly. Um, it's, it's really, really, really difficult. You're dealing with little hairs that are 0 0.07 right down to 0 0.03 of a millimeter. It's they're crazy, crazy thin. So don't worry or it's practice this whole thing is practice so i'm just going to go through how to create um wide fans narrow fans and a closed fan and i'm going to slow it right down so that you can see it all properly so the first thing that's really really